The second video in the Tools of Chemistry unit is on accuracy, precision, and percent error. Here you can see the learning targets for the unit. We have two of them. The first thing we want to be able to do is describe the difference between accuracy and precision in measurements. Accuracy and precision are not the same thing. You may have used both of these terms, the term accurate and precise, to mean the same thing, but they actually are not the same thing as far as it comes to measurements. Accuracy is probably uh, defined more closely to how you think of it or how you have used the term. It is how close a measurement is to the accepted value, or the correct answer. The term precision is how well a series of measurements agree with one another, or the consistency of the measurements. It has nothing to do with how close those measurements are to the correct answer. Here is a visual to help us understand the difference between the two. If, if you are, say, shooting a gun at a target or, or shooting an arrow at a, at a target, uh, if you do not hit the bullseye very often and your uh, bullets do not, uh, are not close to each other, you have low accuracy and low precision. Over here to the right, if, uh, if you continue to hit the target uh, at the same place, you're very precise because you're very consistent. But if they are not close to the bullseye, then you have low accuracy. Likewise, if you hit the bullseye often or are very close to the bullseye often, then you have high accuracy. But if you're not hitting the target in the same place, then you have low precision. Likewise, if you're hitting the target, the bullseye often, and in the same place, or very nearly the same place, then you are both accurate and precise. Obviously, that is the goal, uh, whether you're shooting at a target or you're measuring something. If, if you can measure consistently, and, that, and those measurements are close to the same or to the correct answer, then you are both precise and accurate. So here is an example to consider. We have two students that measure the density of an unknown metal three times each, and we can see their data below. Uh, data for student one, and data for student, data for student one, and data for student two. And we're told the accepted value for the density of the metal uh, is 7.081 grams per centimeter cubed. First question, which student was more accurate? How do you know? Well, recall accuracy is how close we are to the right answer, the accepted answer. And we can look at student two's data and see student two's data are very close to the accepted answer. Student one's not so much. So student two was more accurate, and this is because student two's data are closer to the accepted value. Next question, which student was more precise? How do you know? This has nothing to do with how close they are to the accepted uh, answer or to the right answer. It deals with the consistency of their measurements. If you just look at the range uh, of the measurements, we can see student one's data are closer together than student two's. So that means student one is more precise. This is because student one's data are more consistent. So we've described the difference between accuracy and precision. There is a quantitative aspect to this uh, with the accuracy, and that's calculating error and percent error. That's the next thing we want to do. When we talk about the error in a measurement, it's simply the difference between the measured and the accepted values. So a simple equation would be the error is equal to your measured value minus the accepted value, or what you should get if you do it perfectly accurately. The percent error is the percentage that this accepted value uh, uh, that the error takes up. And there is an equation for this. The percent error is equal to your error divided by the accepted value times 100. Here's an example using these equations. You measured the length of a wood block to be 28.65 centimeters. The actual length of the wood block is 29.94 centimeters. And you're asked to determine your error and percent error. To find error, we simply take the measured value minus the accepted value. Your measured value was 28.65 centimeters. The accepted value, or the correct answer, is 29.94 centimeters. And this gives you negative 1.29 centimeters. If your error is negative, that simply means you measured too low. Uh, so that's what the negative sign would tell you. If, it was, if you measured too high, your error would be positive. To find the percent error, we're going to take your error, the negative 1.29 centimeters, divide by the accepted value and multiply by 100. So plugging in those values, 
this gives you a percent error of negative 4.31 percent again it's negative because your measurement was low here is another example uh, two students measure the density of an unknown metal three times each and this is the exact same data that we just saw uh, before and the accepted value is still 7.08 grams per centimeter cubed and we're asked to calculate the error and percent error for student one well notice this time we have three data points to consider now you might wonder do we have to do the calculation for every single data point and the answer to that is no uh, whenever we have a series of measurements it's easiest just to calculate the average of those measurements first and then do one error and one percent error calculation using the average so the first thing we'll do is we'll calculate student one's average data and we do that just by adding up the values and dividing by the number of values and that gives us an average of 6.32 grams per centimeter cubed now we can find the error and percent error simply using that average so the error is the measured value, well in this case the average measured value, so 6.32 grams per centimeter cubed, minus the accepted value of 7.08 grams per centimeter cubed, and that gives us a negative 0.76 grams per centimeter cubed. Again, it's negative because the measured values were too low. Now we can find the percent error, so we'll just take the error divided by the accepted value, so negative 0.76 grams per centimeter cubed, divided by 7.08 grams per centimeter cubed and we multiply by 100 to turn it into a percentage and we get negative 11 percent. A question you might be wondering is what is a good percent error? If, if you're measured, if you measure very well, what, what would be a, a general number that would tell us we did well? Well that's really hard to, to say. Uh, some measurements are harder to take than others. So uh, in one case where a 5% error or a negative 5% error might be very good, in another case it might be a very poor percent error because the measurement was very easy to take. So it's really hard to say. The only thing we can say for sure is the closer to 0% error you get, the better the measurement is. Simple as that. Here's a practice problem. Uh, again, I would try to do the problem first and then check your answers uh, after you play the video. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the average of our data and again just adding the data and dividing by the number of data points. This will give us an average of 56.2 degrees Celsius. Now we can find the error and we do that by taking our measured value minus the accepted. So our measured value again is the average at this point, so 56.2 degrees Celsius minus the accepted value. That gives us an error of 1.0 degrees Celsius. Notice that it's positive this time because our average is larger than the accepted value. And now we can find the percent error, taking the error divided by the accepted value and multiplying by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So the error of 1.0 degrees Celsius divided by 55.2 degrees Celsius times 100 gives us an error of 1.8 one thing you might be wondering is why do we have two different calculations for errors why do we have an error and a percent error well consider this situation let's say you measured the length of your book to be 28.00 centimeters and the actual length is 32.00 centimeters well that's an error of negative 4 centimeters uh, because you're 4 centimeters short and an error a percent error of negative 12 and a half percent is what you would get there. Now let's say you measure the length of a football field to be 10,968.80 centimeters where the actual length is 10,972.80 centimeters. The error is the exact same as you just made before on your book. You are uh, four centimeters short so negative 4.00 centimeters is your error. Well, the percent error is only a negative 0.0365% for the football field measurement. So the same error is actually a much better measurement for the football field than it would be for the books just because the total uh, amount is so much larger. In other words, what we're saying here is all error is relative. Uh, just because you make the same error doesn't mean it's the same magnitude. Uh, the, a, is the same error for a smaller measurement has a much larger effect 
So in, in effect, it's a worse measurement. Uh, that's why we have an error and a percent error calculation. After watching this, you should now be able to uh, complete each of these learning targets here, describing the difference between accuracy and precision, and you should also be able to calculate the error and percent error in a measurement or series of measurements.